Paul Levin. This is the launch operations manager. The launch team wishes you good luck and Godspeed. Uh, thank you very much. No, it'll be a good one. All right, CDR, FCC, how do you read me? FCC, Lavender. Okay, Neil, have a good one. Three, two, one, five. Minus five minutes. Fifteen seconds. Guidance is internal. Twelve, eleven, ten, nine. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Our solar system is a remarkably diverse and exciting place. While humans have so far ventured no further than to the opposite side of our moon, we've sent probes to many of the planets and even beyond the edge of the solar system. What we've learnt is that each member of our solar system's family has its own unique personality. Our solar system is huge. We're going to use this velodrome to give you a sense of just how big it is. The solar system is made up of our sun and the planets orbiting around it. The closest planet to the sun is Mercury. It's pretty small. Then comes Venus, our own Earth, Mars, and we move into the big ones, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and finally Neptune. First, let's look at the star here at the center of our solar system, the sun. The sun is so big that 1.4 million Earths could fit inside of it. The sun is made of gas, mostly hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen forms helium, providing the heat and light that we receive on Earth. The darker patches are called sunspots. They're actually the cooler parts of the sun's surface. These giant explosions are solar flares. They're very hot spots on the sun and last no more than a few hours. This solar wind is a high-speed stream of gas given off by the sun, mostly at the time of the flares. On Earth, we see its effect near the poles when the solar wind hits our atmosphere. It's called the aurora. Mercury, a tiny ball of scorched iron and rock, is the closest planet to the Sun at an average distance of 58 million kilometres away. At its closest point during the orbit, that distance reduces to 48 million kilometres. It has the most elliptical orbit of the planets. Now, Mercury orbits the Sun quite quickly, but rotates on its axis slowly. So while one full orbit around the Sun takes Mercury only 88 Earth days, it takes 59 Earth days for Mercury to complete one rotation on its axis. Mercury has been visited by two spacecraft, Mariner 10 in 1974 to 1975, and Messenger, which was launched into space in 2004 and orbited the planet from 2011 to 2015, when it ran out of fuel and crashed into its surface. They revealed a planet with little atmosphere and a surface scarred with meteorite craters, much like our own moon. Temperature variations on Mercury are the most extreme in the solar system. During daytime, it gets very hot, 
up to 430 degrees Celsius, and at night, down to minus 183 degrees Celsius. The next planet out from the sun is Venus. Named after the goddess of love and beauty, its gorgeously bright atmosphere hides a pressure cooker of sulfuric acid and poisonous gases. It takes Venus 225 Earth days to orbit the sun, and 243 Earth days to complete a rotation. Venus has the longest day in the solar system, equaling almost eight months on Earth. Venus also rotates in the opposite direction to the other planets, meaning the sun rises in the west. Venus is very bright because it's covered in clouds, which reflect light. In fact, it is the third brightest object in Earth's sky, after the sun and moon. The clouds move three times faster than hurricane winds, and the upper clouds contain sulfuric acid. Venus is like a super glass house because its atmosphere is 97% carbon dioxide. Heat gets in, but it can't get back out. Venus is the hottest planet, about 500 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead. In the 1990s, the Magellan spacecraft returned images of landscape dominated by volcanic features, faults, and impact craters. 85% of the surface is covered with volcanic flows. Next stop, Earth, the remarkable blue marble we call home. Around 150 million kilometres from the sun, Earth has a blue and white colour from space. The Earth takes 365 and one quarter days to complete an orbit around the sun. And 24 hours, or more precisely 23 hours, 56 minutes and four seconds to complete one rotation on its axis. Life exists on Earth because of water. Plants evolved first, and they turn the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere into oxygen, enabling humans and other animals to breathe. Our planet is the only one in our solar system where a large amount of water exists as a cool liquid. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. Now, around the Earth and closest to us, at an average distance of 384,403 kilometres, travels Earth's natural satellite, the Moon. It takes 27 Earth days for the Moon to complete an orbit around the Earth. The Moon's surface is battered with impact craters. Nine, eight, seven, the Apollo 11 mission in July 1969 was the first to land men on the Moon. How is the quality of the TV? Oh, it's beautiful, Mike, it really is. 12 people have walked on the moon, the only extraterrestrial body visited by humans. Because the moon doesn't have any air, the sunlight is very hot and temperatures can reach 123 degrees Celsius. But in the shade, it's extremely cold, as low as minus 233 degrees Celsius. Now, the next planet beyond Earth is Mars, our cold and desolate neighbour that might have once carried life, and still may. Mars orbits the Sun every 687 Earth days. And yet, a day on Mars is very close to a day on Earth, 
at 24 hours and 37 minutes. Due to its fierce red colour, caused by high levels of oxidised iron in the soil, Mars is often called the Red Planet. Mars experiences great dust storms that can envelop the entire planet. Mars is the last of the inner or terrestrial planets, which, like Earth, are made up mostly of rock. Mars has two moons, both very small. Phobos is about 20 kilometres across, and Deimos is half that size. The many channels on Mars have been caused by water or lava from volcanoes. There are huge canyons on Mars. Mariner Valley is almost 10 times the size of America's Grand Canyon. Mars has several volcanoes. At 25 kilometres high, the largest volcano in our solar system is Olympus Mons. It's three times higher than Mount Everest. Evidence of water on Mars has been found by the Spirit and Opportunity rovers. And there are large quantities of water frozen at the poles. Today, exploration of Mars involves five spacecraft in orbit. Mars Odyssey, Mars Express, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MAVEN, and the Mars Orbiter Mission. and two roving robots, Opportunity and Curiosity, which are gathering data. As we move beyond Mars, we come to the asteroid belt, a vast region containing hundreds of thousands of asteroids. Very large rocks, some of which are rich in iron and other minerals. Past the asteroid belt is the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. With over 60 moons and almost large enough to be a star itself, Jupiter is practically a solar system within our solar system. As the largest planet, it takes 11.8 Earth years to orbit the Sun. And yet it spins so fast on its axis that the length of a day is just 10 Earth hours. The first of the gas planets, Jupiter doesn't have a solid surface its gaseous material gets denser with depth. The unmanned Voyager mission to Jupiter in 1977 gave us our first real look at this gas giant and its large moons. So far, 67 moons have been found orbiting Jupiter. The four largest ones were first observed in 1610. The Great Red Spot is a giant spinning storm that has been raging on Jupiter for at least 340 years. The spot is the size of two Earths. The Voyager space probe identified for the first time a ring of dust around Jupiter. Jupiter has rings that are fainter darker and smaller than Saturn's. When Voyager passed one of Jupiter's moons, known as Io, it identified a number of active volcanoes which release an enormous amount of sulphur and sulphur dioxide. The Juno spacecraft, launched in 2011, is scheduled to reach Jupiter in 2016. Saturn's magnificent rings of rock and ice make it the most visually stunning planet in our solar system. Saturn, like Jupiter, is a gas giant composed of hydrogen, helium and other gases. 
it doesn't have a solid surface. It takes 29 Earth years to orbit the Sun and only 10.7 Earth hours to complete a rotation on its axis. Saturn's spectacular giant ring system is observable from Earth, even with a small telescope. The ring span is up to 282,000 kilometres. The spacecraft Voyager gave us a close look at Saturn's rings. It revealed an exquisitely thin disk containing dust particles, snowflakes and rocks. Saturn has 62 moons. Titan is the biggest, bigger than the planet Mercury. Scientists are intrigued by a Titan and the data being captured by the Cassini and Huygens spacecraft. Titan's atmosphere is similar to ours millions of years ago. It's made up of nitrogen, methane and some organic compounds. The Cassini spacecraft has been exploring Saturn, its rings and moons since 2004. The Cassini Huygens mission is one of the most ambitious space missions. It continues to provide invaluable data that might also reveal much about the evolution of the Earth's atmosphere. The next planet, Uranus. Knocked on its side, Uranus has the most complex and unique rotation of any planet in our solar system. Rolling like a ball instead of spinning like a top, Uranus takes a grand total of 84 Earth years to orbit the Sun. And spinning more slowly than Saturn takes 17 Earth hours to complete a rotation. Nearly the same size as Neptune, Uranus's atmosphere is mostly hydrogen and helium, with a small amount of methane and traces of water and ammonia. The blue-green colour comes from atmospheric methane gas. Uranus is described as an ice giant because at least 80% of the planet's mass consists of a hot, dense fluid of icy materials. Water, methane and ammonia that sits above a small, rocky core. In 1977, six rings were discovered for the first time by the Kuiper Airborne Observatory and the Perth Observatory. In 1986, Voyager 2 discovered more rings and an outer system of two distant, brightly coloured rings was discovered by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2003. The total number of known rings is now 13. Uranus has 27 moons, most of which were discovered by the Voyager spacecraft in 1986. Thirty times further away from the Sun than Earth, on the edge of our solar system, Neptune is dark and cold and an ice giant like Uranus. It takes a mind-boggling 165 years to orbit the Sun. And 16 Earth hours to complete one rotation. Blue in colour, it's the windiest planet in our solar system. Supersonic winds reach more than 2,000 kilometres an hour. Neptune has 14 moons. The largest moon is Triton, which, curiously, orbits Neptune in the opposite direction to the planet's rotation. Triton is the coldest body in the solar system, a chilly minus 235 degrees Celsius. Neptune has six ring arcs. The rings are not uniform and have four thick regions. Like Jupiter, Neptune has a large storm cloud called the Great Dark Spot, which is bigger than our Earth. Below this is a smaller storm scientists nicknamed Scooter. Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft to have visited Neptune. 
As we pass beyond Neptune, we find a region, the Kuiper Belt, where dwarf planets are found. And right out here is Pluto. Pluto's elliptical orbit wanders, so its distance from the Sun changes during the year. Sometimes its orbit is inside of Neptune's. Pluto takes 248 Earth years to orbit the Sun and 6.4 Earth days to complete one spin. Pluto is smaller than our Moon. In 2006, Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet. This reclassification came after the discovery of several other larger or similarly sized planetary bodies. These discoveries also led to an internationally accepted definition of a planet. Pluto, which has five moons, is thought to have a rocky core surrounded by a mantle of water ice. Its surface is coated with methane and nitrogen frosts. In 2015, New Horizons became the first spacecraft to reach and explore Pluto. It continues to beam back a wealth of data to Earth. Our solar system is in a galaxy called the Milky Way, which is enormous, but it's only a very minute part and just one of 100 billion galaxies in the whole universe. So, as you can see, the solar system is a weird and wonderful place. There's still so much left to learn about our patch of the Milky Way, and I look forward to discovering more as we send probes and people to explore our extraordinary solar system further.